So a lot of desktop environments actually come with a notification server built into them to support desktop notifications. But for the ones that don't, and for window managers, we're going to be looking at how to set up a standalone notification server. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually decide on which notification server we're going to be running because there are two parts to this. So you've got your actual notification server and then you've got to have a library to actually call it. So for deciding on a notification server, typically I run Dunst, which is this one right here. So it's a minimalistic notification daemon for Linux designed to fit into minimalistic window manager. That's too many minimalistic in one sentence. But I run Dunst. You can run literally anything. So some of these will have dependencies on a desktop environment like the LXQT one, the Mate one, someone actually corrected me on that recently, it doesn't particularly matter, you've got like the XFC one, and notification name. I know that this is for GNOME, I don't know if it has GNOME dependencies, you have to actually check them yourself. But as I said, I run Dunst, you can run whatever you want, but when we get into actually customizing it a little bit, then if you want to follow along, you're going to have to be using Dunst as well. So to install that, it's the way you install that, the same way with every other program. So sudo pacman-s. If you're on something else like Ubuntu, then you're going to, have to use that package manager. But because I'm on an Arch-based distro, or I'm on Arch, I'm going to use Pacman. So just install Dunst. Okay, so I've already got it installed, so I'll just reinstall that. And there we go. Now we actually have Dunst installed. So I've got Dunst already running, but I'll just kill that just for a moment. So before we actually get it set up so it's going to run as soon as you launch your system, you're also going to want to have a library to actually create notifications. So depending on the sort of language you're going to be working with, it's going to really depend on what you need. So typically if a program needs notifications, it's going to be one of the dependencies. So say if you're doing something in C or you've downloaded a program written in C, it's probably going to have a dependency on glib2 or you've got something written in boo or any of these other things. If a program requires a different library, it's probably going to be in its dependency list. But if you want to actually write a program that uses notifications yourself, then you're going to have to download a dependency for it. So I'm going to look at getting the bash dependency, but you could use any of these just for an example. So for bash, all we need is libnotify. So we can download this the same way we just downloaded Dunst. So this is just in the libnotify package. So I've already got that installed and there we go. So if we try to actually look at where libnotify is, we'll see libnotify is not actually the name of the, I guess, command you have to run. So libnotify will give you access to a program called notify send. So if we try to run notify send now with my notification daemon not actually running, we'll try that. <clears throat> so the way this works is you pass in some text here and then you have to pass in text in a second part. So this first bit of text is sort of the title of the notification, and the second part is the content. So if I try to run that, and you'll see it's just going to freeze and nothing's going to happen because we don't actually have a notification server actually running. So we can just bring up Dunst in a secondary terminal right now just, just to test this. So I'll run that, and I try to run notify send again, and we'll see we actually get a notification. So these notifications are going to look a little different to yours because I've done some customization to my Dunst config. But for the safe example, that is basically what it's going to do. So now we actually have Dunst installed and we have libnotify installed, or maybe you use something else, maybe you use any of these other ones. But as I said, we're going to be working with Dunst today. So I mentioned desktop environments before. So if you're running any of these or any of the others that have a built-in notification manager or a notification server, you may not be able to replace it. You're going to have to look at the documentation for your specific desktop environment. I'm not sure about most of them. Anything on this list though, you either can't replace it or it's going to be very, very difficult to replace. So if you're in one of those situations, then I can't really help you. But if you've got a desktop environment where you either don't have one that's built into it or it's kind of just sort of there. So if, say your desktop environment comes with Dunst, it's probably not dependent on Dunst being that you can probably replace that. Or if you're running a window manager, what we're going to be doing next is actually making sure it gets auto started. So there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing this. This example here says to launch it with your first call to dbus. Now I haven't managed to get this to work. So I'm going to suggest doing it in two different ways. So you can do my method or you can do another method. So 
The method that I'm currently using right now is I'm just launching it in my x init RC. So find that. So dot init x init RC. So this is the program that's launched when you actually run start x after you log into your system. So if you've got a display manager, that's the thing that gets run as soon as you put your password in correctly, basically. So I'm launching up a bunch of different programs in here. So I've got my transmission daemon, transmission RSS, and I've also got dunst in here. So for things that aren't dependent on a GUI and that you want launched as soon as you launch your system, I would recommend just launching them in here. You don't have to, obviously. You can launch them in another way. So the other method you can use is actually using your window manager or your desktop environment's auto start feature. So for that, we'll just go into my config folder and I'm running BSPWM. So that's going to be in my BSPWM RC file. If you're in i3, it's going to be in whatever the i3 one was called. I don't remember. What is it? Ah, oh, the i3 config. So you can do it in either of these methods in your Xenet RC or your um, window manager or desktop environment auto start method. Or I guess if you really wanted to, you could come up with your own method. But there's no point reinventing the wheel. You might as well just use something that works. So I still haven't actually removed these from when I did have stuff in here. But... If you wanted to actually launch it in here, you would launch it the same way you launch any other program with your BSPWMRC or your i3 config or any of those other things. So I'm not going to be able to go into what the specific method is for those, but you should know how to auto start programs within whatever you're running. So for BSPWM, it's just launch it and then launch it in the background. So if I just save that now, then... If I was to restart BSPWM, then that would actually launch up Dunst. So just for the sake of this video, though, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to launch up Dunst in this other method. So you can obviously also just launch it as any other program. So that will now be running. Save that. And if we send a notification now, that will just create a notification. So if you've been following along with actually creating these notifications... So the default for Dunst, I believe, is just create a notification that goes across your entire screen. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I'm going to at least show you how to fix that. And also just a little fix if you're using a laptop, for example. So what we're going to be looking in is in our config folder. And we'll look for a folder called Dunst. And I believe it auto-generates this file for you. So what we're going to be doing in here, if we go down to geometry right here. So by default, I believe this will say something like 1920 by 1080. And I'm not sure what the actual size was. You'll see what it is. But what we're going to be doing is just changing what this is. So if we set it to zero, what it's going to do is actually create a size based on the actual content of the notification and run that. So as we can see, it's actually as wide as our notification is. So if you don't want it to stretch across the entire screen, I would put in zero. And then as for the height, I've got it set to five, not because it should be set to five, just because I haven't fixed it. So five is the actual number of pixel high it will be. I should have this set to zero, so it would actually stretch, but because five is actually lower than anything you could possibly put into your notification box, it's just gonna stretch anyway. So if the notification is too big to actually fit in the box, it's just gonna stretch the box. And then the second part here is where we're actually going to place it on the screen. So I've got this at 30 by 20. I think it's 0, 0 by default or something like that. I'm not sure what the actual default for it was. We'll just change this up and see what it actually does. So if I just kill Dunst now, bring up separate terminal, kill Dunst, then restart that up, run this notification. As we can see, it's now 200 pixels away from the right border. So you can have this at whatever you want it to be at. You can have it actually touching the top corner if you really want it to. I'm not a big fan of that. I kind of like having a little bit of a gap, but you can do whatever you want with your notifications. So I did mention another fix that you might want to do, and that is for if you're running a laptop, specifically if you're running a laptop and you're not using a mouse. So if I think it's, yeah, here we go. So the actual click options. So when you run a notification, you can actually do different actions on it. So if you say have a notification that has a URL in it, if you click on that, then what that will do is it'll actually open up in your web browser 
or if you click a different way, it'll close the notification. So by default, I believe middle click is actually going to load up the notification. Now the problem with this, if you're on a laptop, if you don't have a trackpad, is that you don't have a middle button because that is your scroll wheel button. So I like to switch this over to left click and then make right click close current. You can have this set up however you want, but this is how I like it. Now, the one last thing I wanted to go over is how to send different types of notifications. So if you noticed, we were just sending one type of notification. So I, I didn't mention this earlier, but there actually is three types. So you have low, normal, and critical, extreme. I think it's critical. So what you can do is you can actually specify the different types you want to use. So if I set this to low, on my system, it's going to look exactly the same as normal, just because I don't really care about distinguishing between the two of them. But if I set it to critical, however, you'll see that it should be red and there'll be a different symbol there. So critical, there we go. So it's red and there is now this like warning symbol here. So I haven't run into any programs that have actually thrown critical notifications, but if you're say writing a bash program and you wanna, let's say you wanna do something, but only if that folder's there, you could probably send a notification if that folder doesn't exist, for example, and that could be a critical notification or various other things, like maybe you want to throw a notification if you're trying to add a torrent to transmission and you don't have your transmission daemon running. Things like that you can use for notifications. Obviously, if you want to be far more minimal about it, you can just rely on standard out, but notifications are nice when you're not running things within a terminal. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over for this. If you want to learn how to do any of the other sorts of bindings for your notification server, what you can do is come have a look at the Arch Linux wiki and there is a ton of different examples in here. Oh, sorry, there was one more. So if you want to send a desktop notification from a script running as root, you have to do something slightly different. So if we look in here, what we have to do is run this command basically. So what you need to do here is actually replace this X user and X user ID with the name of your user and the actual user ID. So the name of my user right now is Brody. So if I just change this over, I haven't actually tried this off camera, but we'll see if this will work. <laughs> I should have probably tested this. And the user ID, I believe the way you get that is with something like this. So if we go ID dash U, then the name of my user. So hopefully this is the correct number. So apparently my user ID is a thousand. So if I try this, a thousand and it looks like that actually works. Okay, so if you wanna send a notification to your current user from root, this is how you would go about doing this. So one example that I could think of for doing this is if we just go into my cron tabs, for example, my uh, cron jobs, cron tab dash E, if I just show you what one of my jobs look like. So I have this Pacman job in here. So what this will do is actually download all of my packages at a certain interval so that when I want to actually install them, I don't have to wait for them to download. So what I could do is every time that this runs, I could send a notification saying, this is how many updates you currently have. So that's an example for what you could do with that. So I think that's now pretty much everything I wanted to go over. I don't think there's anything else that is going to catch my attention. Yeah, if you want to know any of these examples, just come have a look in here. And they all seem like pretty good examples. And there's a lot of them in here. So surely whatever language that you're interested in is going to probably be on here. And if you can't find it, there's probably some documentation out there somewhere about how to use notifications on Linux. So I'm gonna do a separate video where I actually show you how to set up dunce to look like the way basically I have it set up. So like this, but today I just want to get a notification server running so that if you don't really care about doing any of that extra stuff, you don't really have to watch that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links, so all of my, my Discord and things like that. If you want to chat with me on any platforms, go check those out. I've also got my support links. So if you'd like to support the channel, go check out my Patreon or any of the other links that are down there. Feel free to support the channel, but obviously, if you don't feel like doing it, then you don't have to. 
And I've also got my alternate video platform, so like my library and my BitTube. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>